Good morning, everybody. This is Grant from State of the Spark, and I am super pumped you're here this morning. We've got a phenomenal show this morning. I'm super excited to be back from vacation. We're going to be covering how you can feel free instantaneously. How can you feel free right now in the middle of what you're doing? For those of you who are feeling trapped, feeling constrained, you can feel free instantly. We're going to cover how that works, but the truth is most of you won't do it. So we have a Spark Freedom Framework. Spark has a ton of frameworks. The TLE, the Total Life Experience, the Spark Journey. We've got frameworks and we call them freedom frameworks. But what do you call the freedom framework for feeling freedom? <laughs> this morning, we're going to cover the Spark Framework of freedom. But before that, we've got other news. What's going on in the space skies? We're also going to be covering when art guards choose the artwork. We're going to be covering that. But before anything, before we talk about any other news that'll elevate you, before we talk about any education that should set you free for this week, and there she is, Lisa Welsh, catching us right on the open. Good morning, Lisa. She's probably out there doing deliveries or having people do deliveries. She's doing all kinds of important things this morning. But before we cover anything, you know we're covering morning cup of gratitude. And this morning I have uh, not hot coffee, but hot tea. What do you have this morning. What wonderful warm beverage are you going to accompany with your cup of gratitude? What are you grateful for this morning? Tell me in the comments. You know how we do this. We start our week. We start our time together with what we're grateful for. And you know I'm going to start. Let's do this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. First thing I'm absolutely grateful for, we just got back from a weekend, and I want to share a little bit about this in the um, in the lesson today. But we just shared it had a great weekend. It was a great retreat. Um, here we go. Lisa Welsh says she's grateful for nutrient water for her squash seedlings. And for those who don't know, Lisa Welsh has greens. And those greens are powerful and healthy for you. You should check it out at Vitality Farms. Go ahead and check that out. But what I'm grateful for is this retreat. We had this retreat. We were in a connectivity dark hole, and that turned out to be the best thing ever. We had a great retreat weekend. We spent time with uh, family and friends and their kids and hiking and waterfalls. You can hear all about that. But we're super grateful that we're rested. We drove back yesterday. I'm grateful that I've got tea this morning. I'm grateful that I've got breath in my lungs, and I'm grateful that I know how to access that feeling of freedom anytime I need it. And so we're going to talk a little bit about freedom, but before we do any of that, I also want to say I'm absolutely 100% grateful that the Top 100 Dream Igniter is out. You can see that in the comments below. Get yourself a copy. I'm super proud of it. It's something that we've worked on for a long, long time, and I finally got it out of me, and it's out into the world. So go ahead and check that out. Of course, uh, check out our free Discord if you just want to talk about crypto and financial freedom. And of course, join the Patreon if you want our trade, our buy alerts, and secret financial freedom opportunities. We'll talk more about that some other time. But now let's talk about other news, news that'll make you smarter, news that'll actually make you a cosmopolitan and elevate out of the paradigms that the mainstream media wants you to think about because we're going to be talking about other news, other news. Let's do it. <laughs> if you are watching the show, you are awake. If you were awake and you are in the eastern seaboard, you need to stop watching the show. You need to walk outside. You need to look east, nearly directly east, and you need to go see the Mars conjunction. Out there this morning, we've got the moon, which looks gorgeous this morning. We've got Saturn, Venus, and Mars. In the northern hemisphere, you can see all of them. Saturn, Venus, and Mars. Just look to the east. It's a gorgeous conjunction. You can see it with the naked eye. Now, if you have a telescope, you can go out there and see 22 p Kopf. <laughs> what is 22P Kopf? Apparently, it is an asteroid or a comet or a meteor that's just in the same area, but you will need a telescope to see it. That's a happy conjunction when you can see Saturn, the moon, Venus, Mars, and uh, an asteroid, a meteor, a satellite, or whatever it is. You can go out there and see 22P Kopf. Now, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you get a little bit extra. If you're watching this show and you're anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, you might also be able to see Jupiter, which will be very low on the horizon. If you are into seeing the sky and elevating your consciousness and taking your imagination off planet into other realms that the public might not want you to be thinking about because the public wants you mired 
and what's going on at the gas pump and what's going on in Congress and blah, 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 blah. Those things are important, but not nearly as important as your paradigm and your ability to elevate yourself out, which is what we're talking about with today's story on freedom. But before that, let's talk about another piece of news, and this is guarding the art and how art guards are qualified more than you might think on selecting a gallery show. Mm, 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 mm. In a piece of feel-good news, art guards who are often overlooked have been selected to actually put together an exhibit at the Baltimore Museum of Art. Now, props to the Baltimore Museum of Art for actually having the insight to do this. So two particular art guards, Tracy Archibald Frederick and Chris Koo, are two art guards who have served the Baltimore Museum of Art for years now. They've been serving them for years. And quite often they said a lot of us, this is a quote from uh, Chris Koo, the art guard, one of the art guards who was selected to choose some of the art. Chris Koo says, a lot of us hope, a lot of us being the art guards, a lot of art guards hope that more visitors will ask us and have conversation with us about the art itself rather than asking us where the bathroom is. Have you ever walked to an art museum? Trevor King, what's up, my dude? Trevor King, straight over from YouTube, jumps in. Good morning. How you doing? What are you focused on this morning? How are you building up your financial freedom this morning? How are you building up your personal development this morning? Trevor King, hopefully a little bit on the show this morning. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're doing fantastic. Uh, where are we at here? Boom. So art guards watching the art at the Baltimore Museum of Art basically said, we're not just people to point you where the bathroom is and to prevent you from touching the art. We know a lot about the art. So the Baltimore Museum of Art had the insight of actually having the art guards put together the gallery show. Now, the art show is called Guarding the Art. And in general, the art guards said that art, that the security in a museum is separate from all other departments in a museum. And so he said, Chris Koo, one of the art guards, said we were very intimidated at first. But both him and Tracy Frederick got together and started selecting pieces from everything from the wall color behind the art to which uh, each little gallery or whatever they call each little micro gallery down to exactly what the pieces were that were selected. In fact, Chris Koo picked a Rothko. Now, for those who don't know Rothko, Rothko often did very large squares of art that was basically uh, colored, like experiments in color. And the one he chose was Black Over Reds from 1957. Now, if you want to see more about how actually talented the art guards are, come on now, you can do it. Boom, there's a link. For those who know, who want to see how qualified the art guards actually are, they've actually put together a very stunning gallery. And I think that this feel-good story is newsworthy because I think it reminds us to quit overlooking the people that are often viewed as just shadows or wallflowers because these people often have more to offer than you would first think. These people have a lot going on in their hearts. They know a lot about the art. They've been watching the art. They've been curating. They read all the little placards. They have gone through this for years. And they themselves have their own compass for freedom. And that bridges us into what we're talking about this morning, how you can feel free instantly. And for those who will choose not to feel free instantly, what is a spark freedom framework we have for you to begin to feel freedom over time in a pragmatic way? Let's talk about it. <clears throat> Boom, Trevor King says he's feeling freedom today because he's heading to the gym now. It's leg days, the best day. For those who don't know, for those who don't work out, most people avoid leg day like the plague, but they're the largest muscle groups in your body. And if you work them, you're going to get a lot of progress. In fact, if you want a six pack, actually work on your legs because it actually eats up. The muscle groups are so large that they can, if you're really working them out, they can actually burn far more fat at a much more accelerated rate. Trevor King says he's building that financial freedom by yield farming and providing li uh, uh, liquidity to stake token pairs with low risk of impermanent loss on Yield Wolf. Now, Trevor, this is huge. I'm going to go check out Yield Wolf because for those who don't know, we've got a whole patron, but we've been low key. As the DAOs have collapsed entirely, a lot of my investments uh, are still yield, uh, not yield farming. I am staking and I'm getting a return on staking, but I'm starting to look into yield farming. I just heard of a great 
uh, avalanche degen strategy that I'm going to look into, but I'll have to check out Yield Wolf. So if you want to check out more, if you're still in the crypto market pulling financial freedom. Now, I just heard a great book. I uh, just read a great book. It's over there. If I, if I had a second, I'd reach out and grab it. But for those who are actually into financial freedom, increasing your income is not the way to do it. What? It, it can help. Increasing your income can significantly help, but financial freedom is a psychological game, believe it or not, not a money game. And I'll unpack this in another show, and maybe I'll do a special webinar for our, our patrons and our Discord members, but financial freedom, aka passive income that you don't work for, is actually a psychology game more than an earning game. Now, yield farming is huge. I'm sure Trevor also has work or investments. He's probably staying busy. Yield farming is somewhat passive. You set it up, but you got to watch it to make sure that the things you're yield farming aren't collapsing. But why is this? Why is the investment game a psychology game? We're going to have to unpack that in another show. But I'll give you a quick synopsis, and it's this. Your ability to invest is based on your ability to save. Your ability to save is based on your ability to discipline yourself. Your ability to discipline yourself is based on your psychology. Can you spend less than you earn? Now, Grant, what about increasing income? You said increasing income doesn't do it. I said it could help. But if you increase your income and all you are is in the paradigm of increasing, you will also increase every other aspect of your life, including your consumption. Quite often, we want to increase our income because we want more things. We want to travel more, and we don't have that money, so we increase our income. And guess what? We're already cashing checks that we haven't earned yet. If I earn, if I go from $5,000 a month and I start earning $7,000 a month, why do I want to do that? To travel. Well, you've already spent the money because a trip to Iceland over 14 days costs you about seven to 10 grand. Trust me, me and Marissa discovered this ourselves. One of the most expensive trips we ever took. It was worth it. It was value added. It was absolutely worth it. But when you think increasing income is correlated to increasing consumption, you've already spent the money. And if you've spent the money, you haven't invested the money. So first and foremost, financial freedom is a psychological game. Lisa Welsh jumps in and she says two things. Boom. <laughs> she says amen on that. And then she says... Most income increase is a spending increase. Absolutely. I do recommend you increase your income, but I recommend you only increase your income after you have established the discipline to budget, to live below your means, and to save your income and take that money, save it, and then invest it into something like what Trevor's doing. Somehow, Trevor found the initial money or he worked for the initial money or he had other investments and he put it into yield farming, to put it into yield farming, to be able to risk money that you can lose, meaning he saved this money somehow. Maybe he's eating ramen or maybe he's making and earning a ton, a ton of money. I don't know, but he has chosen to live below his means, put his money into yield farming, then has done the education necessary to do liquidity research. How do you actually provide liquidity on stable token pairs? and then put it into impermanent loss and get all of this going on. Yield Wolf, that's homework. That's homework. Boom. Here we go. Use the active to fuel the passive. Yes, this is a great quote. Use the active income to fuel the passive, and the only way to do that is with the discipline to live below your means. So use the active earned income to fuel the passive income. Boom. Check. This is a guy who's getting me pumped. Because not only is he doing investments, but he's working out. I should go work out. I did my, my walk this morning. I'll do my intense workout. I'll post on my intense workout this afternoon, Trevor. I'll get that going. So what do we got here? Trevor is working on freedom. And we're actually touching on one of the major aspects that I want to touch on, on how to feel instant freedom. But let's actually talk about that briefly. <clears throat> Brief story. Took a trip this weekend. I started the show with this while I was in a connectivity hole. We were in this beautiful, once we turned off the main road, connectivity went down and we ended up in this huge, um, it started out as a huge valley and then it narrowed into this nice cozy valley that was wooded. We were in a cabin that our friends, James and Dory rented, invited us up. There was a beautiful, beautiful stream going all throughout the night. Very calming, wonderful bed. And not only were we in a connectivity hole, Wi-Fi didn't work. The Wi-Fi couldn't reach us. 
As the kids were watching cartoons, we couldn't put on our own streaming shows. So then we tried to get on TikTok. No, we couldn't even watch TikTok. So, of course, we downloaded a few books and started to read. No Wi-Fi, no TikTok, no shows. I couldn't post. And not being able to post even created its own sort of freedom. Now, I want you to put a pin in that story very quickly. That was what we were up to this weekend. North Georgia, a lot of people are visiting Blue Ridge. So, of course, we bought the bullet and said, hey, we got to check out Blue Ridge ourselves. We looked at some real estate. So, it was a write-off. Hello. There's another way to get some financial freedom is to know what's a write-off and what's not a write-off. And so, we looked at property and chose not to get that piece of property, but that made the trip itself a write-off. Put a pin in that. In 2010, I was very ambitious, growing my own paradigms, trying to expand my mind, trying to expand my world, trying to expand, 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 expand my income, expand my resources. 2010, I was working an active earned income job and I put some money together and was able to take the day off and attend TEDx Tampa Bay. Now, for those who don't know, in the mid to late aughts, in the mid to late tens uh, or 2000s, TED became radically powerful. In fact, they leveraged a new technology at the time, and that was streaming video. What? And they started collecting some of the ta uh, talks that, that elite illuminaries were doing based on invite only. In fact, the first season or two, it was invite only. It was Bill Gates. It was Tony Robbins. It was the Google guys. And they were sharing some of their most, uh, some of the strongest insights they had of their world. And it was invite only. And then once streaming video came out, uh, Ted had the idea to start posting a lot of the videos, which you can get on TED.com now. And then ultimately, they started branching off with franchise um, uh, events called TEDx. And we've attended a good handful of TEDx's. I've always been impressed. TEDx Boulder had a great time in, uh, I'm sorry, TEDx Denver. Yeah, had a great time in Denver or Mile High, whatever it was. But um, back in the day, I attended TEDx Tampa Bay. And at TEDx Tampa Bay, there were several really great talks. And one of the talks was by Diego Uribe. And he was from Chile. And he got up there and he began talking about balance versus dynamic tension. Now, I won't go into it because we don't have time for a full TED Talk. Welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> but he did say, I don't believe in balance. If you believe in balance, you're always trying to get a thing to be balanced. And oh my gosh, it's going to fall on my tea or is it not? And there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of um, uh, stress around balance. In fact, balance itself and trying to attain balance creates more stress on the person trying to obtain the balance than balance's unknown cousin. And balance's unknown cousin is dynamic tension. That's where instead of trying to balance, I actually take a cable and I strap a cable this way and a cable this way and that tension causes it to remain. And there's no stress. I'm very confident in its ability to stay in place. Dynamic tension. Dynamic tension can be seen in lots of different places. Balance itself is precipitous. It could collapse at any moment. Dynamic tension quite often keeps something in place. Diego Uribe talked about dynamic tension as it pertains to freedom. When he correlated the fact that in our world, quite often people are seeking <laughs> Lisa Welsh says, I think I live there, dynamic tension, the ability to be, to be stabilized through two opposing forces, but it creates stability, a, 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 a tension, if you will, but that tension keeps it stable and reliable, kind of like a suspension bridge. Now, quite often, Diego said, if you look around our world, especially at our capitalist world, it's expand, 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 exactly what I was trying to do in 2010, expand, expand, expand. I was trying to expand my territory. I was trying to expand my investments. I was trying to expand my property holdings. I was trying to expand within my job, become a better leader, more people that I could lead. The more people I could lead and serve, the more I could expand. And then you have to ask yourself the question, what next? After I expand, what then? I don't know. I steward more. I earn more money. What then? Well, if I say I earn more money, I'm going to not want to be weighed down with all the responsibilities. So I'm going to hire more people, expand, and then hire more people. I have more people to lead. And when again do I get back to surfing? When again do I get back to art? Diego Uribe said simply this. Breathe in as far as you can go. 
And once you're as far as you can go, try to put more air in there. And once you're as far as you can go, put more air in there. At some point, you have to exhale. At some point, you have to contract. Now, a lot of small business owners are afraid that once they exhale, once they stop trying to expand, their entire empire will collapse. I'm reminded of another TED Talk I heard once by Steven Sagmeister, and he talked about every seven years, his entire design firm took an entire year off. They called them mini retirements. I recommend you look it up. But what he was trying to do was get ahead of this urge to grow, 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 grow. If someone says, how are you doing? And your only answer is, great, we're growing. And you never answer, great, we're contracting. And you say it from a confident place and you say it from a hopeful place. I present for your consideration, your setup for a big fall. You ever watch the stock market go, go, go. And you tell yourself at some point, it's got to fall. Trevor King, very used to crypto investments. Trevor King knows that cryptos don't always go up. <laughs> In fact, he's talking about impermanent loss so that you can actually prevent yourself from losing in the ups and downs. In fact, crypto, a lot of the money is made when things are down because money is made when you purchase it right. What Diego Uribe was getting at in 2010 at a TEDx conference is you have to have a controlled moment where you allow yourself to contract, you allow yourself to pull back, you allow yourself to shrink in order to prepare for the next expansion. What did this have to do with the trip to us in Northern Blue Ridge? Being forced to put our phones down, being forced to not be connected gave me plenty of time to think, to get clarity, to ponder, and to prepare for the next moment of expansion. Now we know this. I don't have to tell you this. I don't have to tell you that when you breathe in, at some point you're going to have to breathe out. I don't have to tell you that when you invest in the market, at some point you have to take out of the market. And hopefully you don't wait for one far future day, but you know how to take profits along the way. Hopefully I don't have to tell you that when the market crashes, that's when you start to get bold and look for opportunities. That when real estate crashes, that that is when you start to get excited because that's when the opportunities were there. Well, Grant, I'm not excited. I haven't saved any money. I haven't prepared for this moment. Then you haven't prepared for freedom. And today we're here to talk about freedom. And I promised you in the title today how to give you instant, instantaneous freedom. And I'm going to deliver on that promise right now. Mm, 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 mm. Principle number one, I've got four quick principles for you today. There's the first one is, is how to feel instant freedom. But when you inevitably will not do what it takes to feel instant freedom, what are the other three frameworks for or three things you need to do to have a framework for feeling freedom in a more consistent way. Now, the first one I would say provides itself massive spiritual freedom, massive mental freedom, absolute complete freedom, freedom from the responsibilities of your job. In fact, I love what Trevor King is doing. He's going to the gym. I love going to the gym. I work out twice a day. I do my morning walk. It's usually a 20 to 40 minute walk. I keep my heart rate up or run. I'll run three days a week. And then in the afternoon, I will also cut away for an intense lifting strength training workout. I do that twice a day. I eat right. I do that because I am attached to an idea of an outcome. But what if I wanted freedom from all that? Why do I get up after this show? Why do I do this show? Why do, when I don't the show, me and Marissa hang out and then we get ready for our businesses and attending to our businesses and our investments throughout the day. Monday's an admin day where we survey our real estate investments and our business investments and we tee ourselves up and prepare for all the work we need to do that week. But if I wanted freedom from that, I could have it instantly. Here it is, number one. Number one. This is, the, this is the only note you need to take today. Trevor, if you're on the way to the gym and you're about to go to the gym, take a quick pause because you're going to want to catch this before you have to turn me off. Number one, stop wanting more. For those who are listening and not seeing, I put more in air quotes. Stop wanting more. Stop having more-ishness. Stop having moreness as a character trait. You want instant freedom. Stop wanting things. Grant, that's so paradoxical. No, I go through moments where I just don't want anything. I don't want to build business. I don't want 
more clothes. I don't want a bigger car. I don't want a bigger house. I want experiences and I still allow myself to desire experiences, but I don't have to walk every inch of the Great Wall of China. Used to be a goal of mine. I don't want it anymore. Stop wanting more. And I guarantee if you have a sincere turn here and you sincerely stop wanting more, you will instantaneously feel relieved. What do you have to do? Yeah. Do the basics. Make sure you pay the bills and come home. You could veg out. You could paint. You could sit and do just about anything else. <laughs> Lisa says, that's a really long walk. Yes, a 40-minute walk. I have a nice little path. I have two paths I take. And I get in a nice 40-minute walk, but I keep my heart rate up at a certain level, Lisa, definitely. Instant mental freedom. Now, quite often you hear this quote from uh, Braveheart. A man's not free unless he's free in his heart. A woman is not free unless she's free in her heart. A person cannot feel freedom unless they feel free in their heart first. And I believe this in my core. But as a coach and trainer, I have coached small business owners. I've coached PhDs. I have trained Fortune 500 companies. And I have found most people will not do the heart work to feel free. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people, are tempted with this idea. And as soon as they think, grow, grow, grow. No, I just, I'm not even going to want growth. I'm not going to want more. If you're an entrepreneur, suddenly your heart gets palpitations because you suddenly are afraid that your business is crashing. If we're not growing, we're closing. That's what most business owners feel. And you got to fight that feeling. It's like fasting. If I don't eat now, I'm going to starve. Have you practiced fasting lately? Have you practiced resisting your dopamine receptors and urges? You can have instant freedom by defying the urge to expand. I want more kids, more family, more time. Why not have less time? I want more food. Why not less food? Crave less food. Contract. Focus first on contracting. Here's a catch. Grant, how do I follow my goals if I give up wanting more? This is why I said most of you won't do this first one. Most of you will not do this first one. And quite honestly, if I were to confess to you, to the five people, seven people, 10 people, three people, eight people watching right now, <laughs> let me confess something to you. I don't always get this right. <laughs> I only experience this in moments because there's a huge problem. It will be difficult. To, here's the problem. I'm a goal-oriented person. Are you? I'm going to go to the gym. Why go to the gym? I've got goals. Why paint? I've got painting goals. Why build these businesses? I've got business goals. It's hard to pursue your goals if you don't want anything more. Marissa is the quickest, quickest one to point this out. If I don't want to be a million, if I don't want to have net cash million dollars, then I won't pursue my next five properties. We've got our current properties. Why would I pursue more if I don't want more? If I don't want that million dollars. So this is an obvious paradox. <clears throat> and not everyone can hold a paradox. In fact, if anything, if I could bestow one trait onto you, it's I wish for you the ability to hold paradoxes in your brain. But most people can't. The paradox of I love you, but I'm angry with you. That's an obvious one. But I don't want more yet. I can still pursue my goals. Why? Because the pursuit is the thing I want. I want a worthy battle. I want a worthy, a sense, I want something worthy to chase. I want meaning. I want to create meaning in other people's lives. I want freedom to write more books. So I have to stop wanting more. Paradoxes upon paradoxes, but here's the catch, and, I, and here's the reality. Most people cannot hold paradoxes in their brain, at least not for long. Not everyone works that way. But here's how you can trick yourself. Here's how you hold a paradox in your brain like this. You tell yourself, I will stop wanting more for a season. Give yourself 60 days. This is why 75 hard is such a good workout program. It's not 90 days. 90 days sounds like it's a little long. I have a friend, Rob Boudreau, who says, he always says, you can do anything for 90 days. You can have any habit for 90 days, but I'm going to cut you some slack. I'm going to say 60 days. Convince yourself to have less. Stop wanting more for 60 days and you're going to feel instantaneous freedom. Say, 
after 60 days, just go down the TLE, which is a spark freedom framework called the total life experience. It's, it's a uh, health and fitness, healthy, happy relationships, work. We enjoy in spirituality and you've got to feel a seven to 10 or you don't have to, but to feel happiness and freedom, you have to feel a seven to 10 in those four areas, fitness and health, healthy, happy relationships, work. We enjoy in spirituality. If you do not feel at least a seven, in all those areas, you're going to feel like something's off. And if you don't feel at least a seven in any of the areas, you're definitely going to feel like something's off. So here's the thing. Cut out some things in your life for the next 60 to 90 days in the area of the TLE. Cut out eating out and distracting yourself with food. Oh, I'm bored. I don't want to think about the things <laughs> I'm thinking about. So I'm going to eat something bad for me. Stop doing that. For 60 to 90 days, let yourself fast. <clears throat> let yourself not eat junk food just for the next 60 to 90 days. That's health and fitness. Number two, cut out unhealthy relationships. Hey, could I pick your brain? Hey, could I take you to coffee? As long as these people are taking from you and not feeding you. Now, maybe you have those appointments and those opportunities with people who are more like what you want to be like. Take those appointments, but cut out unhealthy relationships, healthy, happy relationships. Number two, at least for the next 60 to 90 days. Number three, cut out projects you no longer enjoy or at least put them on hold for the next 60 to 90 days. Work we enjoy. You got to do work you love. You haven't had time to paint because that shed project in the yard is really annoying you and you hate it, but you got to get it done. You feel like I got to get it done. Can you put it on hold for 60 to 90 days and just paint? Do something to make yourself happy. Cut out projects that, no, that you no longer enjoy or at least put them on hold for the next 60 to 90 days. And number four, cut out any inputs that conflict with your spirituality. Now hear me on this. The number one interference to spirituality is input because I find spirituality is connecting with a deep well inside yourself out of which stuff flows, output. Spirituality for me is actually output. It's insight and that insight leads to output. It's clarity because you heard your inner voice and that clarity led to an output. So how do you tap that spirituality for the next 60 to 90 days? Cut out inputs that are conflicting with your spirituality. Binging too many shows that conflict with who you want to be spiritually, cut it out. Now, here's the trick. Most of you won't do it. I get it. That's number one. Stop wanting more. But most of you will not want more. I gave you a framework on how. Pause and go back and try it. Give it a shot. Most of you won't do it, though. So here's number two. Stop wanting more temporarily, and that will create downtime. And in that down, even for a week, and in that downtime, you will have time to cut out all of your wants. If you can't cut out work, if you can't cut out relationships, you can at least cut out wants and just limit your wants. And this is actually the dynamic tension. Instead of getting rid of it all, cut it down to knowing what I now know. Start with that sentence. This is a powerful sentence. Start sentences with knowing what I now know. <laughs> this gives you grace to change your mind. You might have said, I'm going to work out two times a day for the next 365 days. You might have said that. Knowing what I now know, <laughs> I'm going to work out two times a day for the next 75 days. Knowing what I now know, I'm going to prevent taking on unwanted coffee appointments. Knowing what I now know, I will only work in time blocks instead of pop-up appointments. Knowing what I now know, I can take time to narrow down what I really want. Knowing what I now know, I don't want a McLaren SLR 22. That's a car I used to want. Knowing what I now know, I don't want it. Knowing what I now know, I want a refurbished Ford, old-timey Ford truck that I built, rebuilt from hand. That's Knowing what I now know, that's what I want. I don't want a fancy car. I want an unfancy car that I put together. Knowing what I now know, I want to eat right. I don't want to necessarily live at the gym. Knowing what I now know, I just want five more properties, not the 100 properties and not properties in every other country in the world. I just want five more properties. Knowing what I now know, I want more employees, not necessarily more clients. Why? Because I can strike a dynamic tension of employee to client ratio and not have to put my time into it itself. How do you do the second point, identifying what you really want? A, use the sentence knowing what I now know. B, pick up my book, Top 100 Dream Igniter. That's my book right here, man. 
That's actually my process on how to do it. Go pick up a copy or give a copy to a friend. Or if that's a little bit much because there's a lot going on in that book, pick up my free ebook, The Seven Day Homework. Download it seven days to total clarity. Or if you don't trust my writing, go read Think and Grow Rich. It's a fantastic book. I don't like this edition of Think and Grow Rich, but go get Think and Grow Rich. Go get massive clarity. Cut out a bunch of stuff. Stop wanting more, or at least stop wanting more for now. Cut out a bunch of stuff, create time, and ideally get what you want. Then know what the three basic freedoms are. In subsequent videos, I'm going to unpack these as their own video. I'll unpack these later, but there are the three basic freedoms. Now, if you cannot stop wanting more and feel free, easy. Stop wanting more, feel free. But if you're like most humans and you can't do that, you need a framework for freedom. And here's the progressive framework. You can't have <clears> – <throat> when people talk about freedom, most of them are talking about financial freedom. They don't like this fact. They don't want to be called out on this. No, I'm not talking about financial freedom. I just want I just want to do what I want when I want. But stop wanting more. Well, no, because I still want to stay on the beach, but also fly to the mountains. I also want to visit my friends in Europe, but also take care of my kids' college fund in case they need it. I want to put money away for my great-grandkids. Okay, you want some more? You're talking about financial freedom because we're in a financial economy. <clears throat> if we were in an agrarian society, I'd say you want agricultural freedom. If we were in Haiti, I'd say you want goat freedom. A lot of wealth is measured in goats or chickens or resources. If we were in a gold-based society, I'd say gold freedom. We're in a credit society or a financial-based society, so I'm talking about financial freedom. You still want more. You're like a monkey with its hand in the cage. The monkey reaches in the cage and grabs a coconut and won't let go of the coconut, pulls on the coconut, but it can't get its hand through the bars. Just got to let go of the coconut. But we're not going to. So if we're not going to, then you need another steps to financial freedom. Here are the steps to financial freedom. Number one, location freedom. First and foremost, if you have a J-O-B, <clears throat> whether you're self-employed or whether you're employed by someone else, first and foremost, create financial or location freedom. Now, location freedom is easier today than ever before. Thank God for the pandemic. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God for these technologies. But location freedom. You can experience location freedom, get somewhere. And, and location freedom does two things. Number one, it allows you to work unseen. If someone is not looking over your shoulder, you are now responsible for producing. Boom. Here's my man, Billy Weigel. Gratitude. Thankful for you, Grant. Let's get ready for another week in the grind. I'm tired, but I know the freedom that comes from the success at the end of this road. And Billy, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm convinced and I said it last Monday. We need to talk about doing a show together. I was out of town this weekend, but let's get on the calendar. And I know we're trying to coordinate our calendars this week. Uh, this week, let's get on the calendar because I think we could do a financial freedom show together, man. I'd really love to uh, add that to the mix. Financial Freedom Fridays, I'm telling you, man. That's what it's all about. <clears throat> so the first on the path to financial freedom, the first is location freedom. Work where no one is watching you. This will reveal uh, several things. Number one, it will reveal if you're lazy or not. Because if no one's watching, are you going to gravitate towards binging? Are you going to gravitate towards wasting your time? Or are you suddenly going to kick it into gear? Because it'll get other things going like, oh, it used to take me eight hours to do this. I think it's called Robinson's Law. I think it used to be called Robinson's Law. Maybe I'm mistaking that or Thompson's Law. Work expands to fill the time allotted. If you have someone watching you and you're sitting in a cubicle, you're going to take eight hours because they're watching and it's whatever. Time for dollars. But if you have location freedom, you will suddenly be forced to know that no one's watching. I wonder if I could get all this done early and hit the pool. You have economic incentive to take care of things in an efficient way. So the first freedom, the first block of freedom on the path to financial freedom, the first block is location freedom. Your employees aren't watching you because your employees are looking to you as an example of productivity. And if all you show them is workaholicism, then that's what they're going to do. But is it going to be effective and quality? You need to set the standards and then sometimes not be present. Now, there's a lot of times that as a boss and as a leader, you do need to be present, <clears throat> whether through Zoom or whether through text. You need to be present. But if location freedom occurs, they're not looking over your shoulder and you're not looking over theirs. You'll actually find out if they're lazy. They'll find out if you're lazy. Or you might find out you're lazy and then step up to the plate, which is what I hope for you. You step up to the plate and start delivering at a new level. 
Once you have location freedom and no one is looking over your shoulder and you are responsible, because remember, you cannot have reward without more response. I want more reward. Then what you're saying is, is I want more responsibility. I want more location freedom. You have more responsibility to manage your time better, to manage your energy better. I want financial freedom. You have more responsibility to understand terms like, like uh, Trevor brought up <clears throat> about yield farming. There's all terms in here that you'll be responsible to know if you're saying you want financial freedom. If you say you want more reward, you need to absolutely get it in your head that you are saying, I want more responsibility. I want to learn more. I want to manage better. <sighs> First and foremost, location freedom. Secondly, time freedom. Once you have location freedom, you now then empirically, like instantly, will realize I could manage my time better. If I put all of these appointments back to back, they call it time blocking or time chunking. In my book, I actually call it chunking. You start putting things together that are similar and go, wow, if I do all of my phone calls back to back, I'll be uninterrupted the rest of the afternoon to do deep work. Time freedom. Why do we manage time? When we say time management, we're not actually managing time. Time will proceed. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Whether we're there to watch it or not, time will proceed regardless. So we're not, it's not actually time freedom. It's not actually time management. It's actually energy management, your energy. And if you know that you have peak energy that really resonates with other people before 11 a.m., you need to make all of your phone calls between 9 and 11 a.m. You can get a day's worth of phone calls done between 9 and 11 and just do deep work the rest of the afternoon or paint or whatever it is you want to do. But if you get first freedom, the first block, the foundational building block on the pyramid of freedom, the first building block is location freedom. No one's watching. It's the hardest one to obtain because you got to reconfigure the type of work you do. You actually know you can deliver on that output. Then immediately you go into time management just by default. Because you realize I'm my own worst boss and I've got to actually start delivering a few quick things on that. You'll start learning to say no. You'll start saying no to frivolous appointments. Your, your BS meter, your radar for people's BS will come up pretty quickly. But you'll become extraordinary at fewer things. You'll start focusing and realizing, dang, like if no one's watching me and I want to do this more efficiently, I got to become really good at fewer things. And you'll start going deep. If I want to be a really good coach and I want to coach once a month or twice a month for each client, I only encounter each client twice a month and then once a quarter of my coaching clients, man, I better deliver. I better go deep with that. If I'm going to be charging the couple hundred dollars an hour, I charge for that from each of my clients. <clears throat> I better be able to get them results. So I better become extraordinary at fewer things to start saying no, become better at fewer things and then really get good at time blocking, time chunking. Location freedom, time freedom, then you start to experience arbitrage. Then you start to experience financial freedom. You start to earn more than you're putting in hours for. Now, that you'll be saving either money, which is a big hope, but actually not at first. At first, you'll be saving energy. And in saving energy, you'll have more mental reserves to think creative and think of more leveraged solutions. And then there's a compounding in that time. If no one's looking over your shoulder, location freedom, and then you're managing your time better because you're getting more efficient, you'll begin to have a surplus before you have a surplus of money. You'll begin to have a surplus of time and energy. And it'll be uncomfortable at first because you'll be like, ah, oh, I have to be busy. So you'll actually go make yourself busy again. So you'll show up back at the office and you'll give up your location freedom, give up your time freedom because you can't stand the psychological pressure of sitting with yourself. Location freedom, time freedom, financial freedom begins with time freedom within that block. And that leads to energy freedom. And when you have this energy freedom, instead of just channeling that into the same old active income work, earned income work, you're supposed to stop and become more efficient. Adam is very good at this. My partner, Adam, for Spark Billing Solutions. He's very good at channeling that energy into writing better standard operating procedures, writing better delegations to people, writing better marketing tactics, writing better ideas, improving on the system, not working in the system. Or if you work a J-O-B and just got better at it, channeling it into painting. Is painting wasted time? I don't know. How do you come out of it? Do you come out of it drained or energized? I come out of it energized. I come out of it with better ideas. It's a meditation. In fact, the Enso itself is a Japanese art style, and I'm doing my own version of it. You can see my Enso's everywhere. It's literally ADD art. I consider it ADHD artwork. It's a meditation I do. 
to actually come out of it with more clarity, but more ideas, more energy, better vibes, so that when I encounter potential clients, I'm bringing better energy to that. Financial freedom, first and foremost, starts with an energy freedom. Then you have better ideas, better leverage, better thoughts, better quality of thought, and that output then creates your financial surplus. Location freedom first, time freedom second, financial freedom third. We'll unpack those in more detail later. Only after you have financial freedom. Remember, you could have instant freedom if you just let go of the coconut. You could have instant freedom if you stop wanting more. Stop wanting more for your kids. Ooh, wait, what? What is he talking about? That's some BS. It's too early in the morning for, Sam, for him to say something like that. Stop wanting more for generations. Stop wanting more homes. Stop wanting better clothes. Stop wanting faster cars. Stop wanting to fill up your gas tank. I'm telling you, if you live sincerely, I call it beach mode or island speed. When we lived on the Dominican Republic, things just move at island time, right? If you can get into island time and stuff just don't matter, you can instantaneously feel freedom, but most of you won't. So this framework is a framework for the hustle. It's a framework for aligning with our economic system that we have in America where we still want more for our generations. Let's be real. We still want to make more impact. Let's be real. In fact, it, this show, State of the Spark, is about igniting lives of explosive significance. We still want more for other people. We want more for ourselves. We don't just want nice clothes. We want to feel comfortable in our own skin. We don't necessarily want bigger houses. We want to entertain our loved ones and invite our family and give them rest and respite. We want to invite our friends over to the house and speak into their lives and let them share about their marriages and share about about the challenges with their kids we want to entertain, not because we want to be seen as anything special, but we want to give more to those we love. It's not about the hustle. It's about aligning with who we want to be. And quite honestly, if we were to be gut level honest, not all of us are built to let go of society. Some of us are. My beautiful wife is. And by proxy, I have now and again stepped in and out of that with her. But I have one foot in this other world where people are moving at a certain pace and we can't deny that. And so if that's how it's going to be, here's the framework. Location freedom first, time freedom second, financial freedom third. And you will experience some degrees of freedom, but it's progressive. It could be, it could be, you could tear the bandaid off, but we're not going to, let's be honest. So we need a progressive path towards freedom. And that's what the three freedoms are about. I'm going to be writing a book about it. So I'm going to be doing a few shows on it. I'm going to be writing more and more about the three freedoms. So watch more for that. Listen, why are we talking about freedom? Why are we do this show at all? Why do I want to do more shows? Not less. I'm not going to stop wanting to do more shows. I do it because I want more for you. I want you to be happy. I want you to experience more significance. I want some tool to click with you wherever you're at in your life, where it makes more sense, where you feel more comfortable, where you breathe a little easier. I want happiness for you. I want a glorious week for you. I want joy for you and your loved ones. I want you to feel what I call freedom. And all we call this in state of the spark is the mission, igniting lives of explosive significance, starting with your own. Have a great day.